Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counterspy. Washington calling David Harding, Counterspy. Washington calling David Harding, Counterspy. Harding, Counterspy, calling Washington. United States Counterspy. Especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the hot car killer. Another counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12 ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi's America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, to Counter Spy. A bright, brisk fall afternoon. Around the dirt track roar a dozen low-slung racing cars. Sudden death, an added passenger in every one. Axles brush on the straightaways. Tires scream as they skid on turns, then straighten out again. A man wearing the armband of an official of the track runs to the pit of car number 18. Hey, you! Yeah? Are you the mechanic of car 18, driver Joe Stacy? What's the matter? This is an official order. Flag him down. Pull him out. He's like the way. I said stop him. Now, he's just coming in the straight way. Here's your flag. Use it. Okay. Here he comes. The idea of holding me in. Stacy, this track will not tolerate dangerous, irresponsible drivers like you. We are hereby forbidding you to finish this race. And we're going to see to it that you're barred from every other track in the country. Now get yourself and your car out of here in a hurry. Holy smoke, Joe. What are you going to do now? It's no problem, Mitch. Back in New York, my future's all taken care of. I got a wonderful, beautiful connection there. Red hair. Hello? Hello, honey. Joe Stacy. I'm calling you from Chicago. Joe, darling, as if I didn't know. You coming to New York? I got it, Laura. I've been bounced off the tracks for good. Oh, Joe. After I take a good long look at you, I'm going to need eating money. You got any ideas? Sure, Joe. I'm a business career woman now. What? I'm a secretary. Private secretary to a corporation. The corporation is five foot eight, 150 pounds with gray hair and a big fat bank account. So how do I fit in? Leave that to me, Joe. I'll get you a job with my corporation. I'm going over to his apartment now. Joe, it's a penthouse with overstuffed chairs, soft as marshmallows, and a view of New York. There's only one real trouble with the job. He keeps playing a certain phonograph record again and again and again and again. Laura, you've been staring out of that window for an hour. The view always fascinates me, Mr. Brewster. Maybe you'd rather be down there among those lights with some younger man. Like the one you asked me to hire? I'm your secretary, Mr. Brewster. Besides, young men bore me. To be with or to work for. Well, how lucky for me. I should hate losing you as a secretary. You... You will, Mr. Brewster, if you don't stop that phonograph sometime. Very well. I play that music constantly, Laura, because the orchestra was playing at the night you and I first met. Haven't you any such memories? With Joe Stacy, for instance? I live in the present, not the past. Mr. Brewster, the warning buzzer. Someone's coming up in the elevator. Suppose you let them up for me just this once, huh? I don't know how. On my desk there, 
Yes. The first button is the intercom to the elevator. Press it. That stops the warning buzzer. Now you can talk to whoever's in the elevator while it's held on the floor below. That intercom box on the left. Yes. Yes? Who is it? George Lesage. Mr. Brewster's expecting me. Oh, yes, Lesage. We're bringing you up. Now what, Mr. Brewster? The button on the right starts the elevator again to bring him here to the top floor. I see. Why is that junk dealer coming here? <laughs> because he and I have a little surprise for you. Come in, Lesage. Good evening, Mr. Brewster. Hello, Miss Montfair. Hello. Yeah, I brought the latest batch of papers for you, Mr. Brewster. All in good order? Yep, ownership papers of six total wrecks I bought in from my junkyard. Two Buicks, a Chevy, a Ford, two Pontiacs, all from the way. Well, all plentiful models and relatively easy to steal. Fine. As soon as the cars come in, I can turn them over to you and your used car salesman. Stay in a week, huh? Mr. Brewster, I think it's dangerous to mix all those stolen cars with your ordinary used cars in your sales room. Hey, that's the laugh, Miss Montclair. The smartest cover-up that was ever in this racket. Hot cars... Cooled off. <laughs> okay, Mr. Brewster, that cleans me up here. I'm on my way. Lesage, yeah. instead of your going to the ferry now, you go to your garage and wait there. I'll keep that appointment. Ah, okay. Laura, the elevator release button, please. Good night, Miss Montana. Good night. Good night. Mr. Brewster. Yes, Mr. You didn't tell me the surprise you and Lesage had for me. I've decided to take your uh, childhood friend, Joe Stacy, into my organization. Bring in stolen cars from other cities. Oh. Oh, then he's the one who's coming in on the ferry. And instead of Lesage, you're going to meet him yourself, is that it? I'm curious about him, Laura. An old friend who so fortunately turned out to be an expert car thief and life. Now tell me, what's the quickest way for me to get to that ferry? Mr. you got a light? I think so. Stacy? Yeah, the sage? No. I'm Andrew Brewster. The boss himself, huh? You the car? Second in line. You were instructed to be first. A truck cut out in front of me. I thought you were a former racing driver. Lay off, Brewster. Oh, yeah. Laura Montclair said you were touchy about having been ruled off the track. Well, I am. You'll find we'll get along if you carry out instructions, Stacy. If you don't shoot your mouth off. When you leave the ferry, drive to the garage at 816 East 28th Street. Pick up Lesage. Proceed to his junkyard in New Jersey. Okay. What's Lesage look like? Oh, about your height. With an untidy black mustache. When do I see you again, Brewster? This will be our only meeting. Why this one? Laura talks so highly of you. I wonder why. Curious, Brewster? Or jealous? As you so picturesquely put it, Stacy, lay off. I'm a trifle touchy myself. Goodbye, Stacy. Hello? It's Montclair. The stage talking. Give me Brewster. He hasn't returned from his ferry trip. Listen. I went back to my garage like Brewster told me and found my assistant hired a new guy. And I spotted him for a cop. What? I cleared out to make this call. The cop is there now and you got to head Joe Stacy off. Can you do it? No, I can't. It's too late. He must be at the garage right now. Never mind that. Come out. Not a chance, copper. This is for you. Washington. Bulletin 
one. New York detective Jerry Winters found murdered in garage at 816 East 28th Street. Further information being rushed here by New York police. No clue to killer as yet. David Harding to Harry Peters. Meet me at airport in exactly half an hour. We're flying to New York. Peters, you saw the message about the murder of Detective Jerry Winters. Yes, Dave, but I didn't know what to make of it. Read this letter, Peters. Winters' division chief. Teletype it in. Dear Chief, I'm scribbling this in a hurry in a cheap boarding house since I may not get a chance to write again. I've made a connection that may get me a job in a garage at the transfer point for that interstate stolen car racket we're investigating with the counter spies. I'll know details tonight and we'll report. Signed, Jerry Winters. When'd you get this, day? This morning, right after the notice from New York of his murder. He must have gotten the job. Then been covered so closely he couldn't even make a phone call. Yes. The New York police are covering every angle they can hit. The first thing we'll do is fine-tooth comb that garage. Dave, I've been interviewing all the employees in this garage. They all swear that if there was anything crooked going on here, they didn't know a thing about it. How about the owner? His name is George Lesage. But they say they rarely see him, and nobody knows where he might be right now. How are you making out? Well, I've been working with the examination crew. Take a look at this concrete pillar, Peter. The concrete gouged out about two feet up from the floor. Looks as if a car cracked into it. Yes, one of the employees I talked to earlier said it must have happened during the night. And how does that help us? Well, take a look at it through this pocket magnifier. Flecks of paint. Two colors. Benson of the examination crew says some of the flecks are of brown paint over a year old. And these other flecks of light blue paint for the top coat, a freshly repainted car. And that's one of the first steps of an efficient hot car outfit, Peter, to give the stolen cars a quick repaint. Somewhere there's a car with a dented fender, brown paint underneath, blue paint over it. I want to put out a fast bulletin and find that car. <laughs> Brewster, I'm waiting for you and Lesage to tell me how you're going to help Joe Stacy. Miss Montclair, Stacy's safe in my junkyard over in Jersey. Besides, Laura, he sounds like a man who helps himself. I introduced him to you, Mr. Brewster. He killed a detective to protect your racket. You've got to help him. On his account? On yours. And Mark. I wonder if I can afford to have a cop killer in my organization. What are you getting at? Lesage. Uh, Remember what happened to Whitey? Driving along a mountain road, his car went over the side of a cliff. Accidentally. Laura. I won't help you, Mr. Brewster. Laura, my dear, Stacy knows and trusts you. You're going to invite him for a ride with the sage tomorrow. He brought him into our organization. It's only fitting that you help him leave it. Take it easy. These mountain roads are tricky. Quit worrying, Lesage. But you had a few drinks. Listen, I can drive with my eyes shut. Maybe, Joe, but I wouldn't like to be with you when you try it. Why don't we pull over for a while? Anything you say, baby. What a wonderful view. Doesn't that train look small from up here? Like a toy. You know, a guy could go over this cliff easy in a car. That wooden rail wouldn't hold a weak flea. <laughs> you're, you're some kidder, Joe. Put up your hands, Lesage. Uh, uh, what is this? It means you're going to have the accident that you and Brewster cooked up for me. Laura, Laura, you're double-crossing Brewster, and he's stuck on you. I'm not stuck on him, Lesage. I take his nonsense now so I can take a lot of his money later. All right, Joe. Listen. Listen, give me a chance. Give me a break. Give it to him, Joe. No, <laughs> 
Mitchell. Put your identification papers in his pocket. Okay, baby. Be sure you get everything that identifies him as George Lesage. Papers. This watch, wallet. Picture of a kid. Never mind that. Pour the whiskey over his clothes. Smell like a saloon. Hurry, he's coming too. Start the engine. Can you get the car over the cliff alone? I don't want my fingerprints on it. What about mine? The more prints there are of you, the sure the police will be it was you that crashed. Okay, baby, now you get out. Be careful, Joe. I'll start her into a skid. I'm good at that. Then jump. Keep that door open. Right. Hurry before another car comes along. Take it easy, baby. Jump, Joe! Coming! There she goes. In just a moment, we'll return to Counter Spy, brought to you by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question. Why take less when Pepsi's best? No budget, no allowance, ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi Cola. Because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste. Twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi's best? Yes, families like yours and mine. Families all over America. They're all saying, why take less when Pepsi is best? Pepsi Cola hits a spot. Tastes terrific when you're hot. More and better than the rest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? Now, back to Counter Spy. Routine report to Statistical Department, Washington. Received from State Police, New Jersey, at Counters by New York Field Office. Fatal car crash off Highway 6A. Car identified as having been stolen four days ago in Baltimore, Maryland. Relay this bulletin to David Harding, now in New York. File copy of instructions. Harding to Peters. Check on that stolen car in Highway 6A accident. Reporting to Harding. Wreck almost complete, but left fender shows dent corresponding to gash and concrete pillar in Lesage Garage. Undercoat of paint brown. Outer coat blue. Victim tentatively identified from fingerprints on car and papers is one Joe Stacy. Fingerprints forwarded to Washington. <laughs> Still interested in the bright lights down there, Laura? There's a ghost dancing among them now, Mr. Brewster. I know it was difficult for you, Laura. But it was Stacy or me. I had no choice. Neither did I. <laughs> As you so often said yourself, we're in a tough racket, aren't we? Dave, Washington reported yet on Joe Stacy? Yes, but the fingerprints on the body in that smashed car were not those of Joe Stacy. Who then? George Lesage. Lesage? Well, that's the man we were looking for. He owned the garage where Detective Winters was murdered. That's right, murdered by Joe Stacy. Stacy, how do you figure? Well, somebody took a great deal of trouble to make us think Stacy was dead, and that would suit Stacy very well. Besides, look at his record. 
racing driver, ruled off the tracks for dangerous and crooked driving. Hold up charge, suspended sentence, assaulting an officer, 30 days. <laughs> a bad boy. Yes, but it's hardly probable a hothead like Stacy's the boss of the entire racket. Nor that Lesage was. We're looking for the top man, Peters, and Stacy might lead you to him. Lead me to him? You're going undercover, Peters, to locate Stacy. Then we can set a trap. Joe, I'm worried. Well, what about, baby? I don't think it's safe for us to meet in such a public place. <laughs> I got this tavern in my pocket. Besides, this new mustache is sprouting. And the papers are full of pictures of the wreck. I got killed two days ago, remember? Joe, Bruce will be wanting to see Lesage soon, and then there are the other men. Hey, bud. Yeah, Marty. Yeah, Pete Williams in the back room. He says you expect him. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Marty. Joe. Hmm? Who's Pete Williams? Oh, he's a guy I met last night right here. The bar, he starts shooting up his mouth about racing drivers. He got into a little argument. It turns out to be an all right guy. He's in the same racket. You sure he's all right? Yeah, he knows a lot of the same people I do out in KC. You go on over to Bruce's apartment, baby. I'll call you later, huh? Okay. So long, honey. Hello, Pete. What goes? I got a tip for a guy. What guy? A guy named Joe Stacy. Joe Stacy's dead. I read it in the papers. If he isn't already, maybe he's going to be. What's the tip? The finger's getting put on him. By? His boss. For what? The tip I got says the boss already figured out it wasn't Joe Stacy in that wreck, but a bird named George Lesage. He figures it was Stacy that did it. How do you know? That boss has been trying to contact a couple of trigger men from Chicago. Why are you telling me? I hate hot tips to go to waste. Where can I reach you later? See you in about an hour. Tell me where you want me to be. What's the matter with here? What do you do? Phone me? I'll come back and get you. Keep sober, Pete. Sure. Honey, it's Joe. Listen, you were right to be leery of that guy, Pete Williams, who tried to caper on me. What caper? Well, he tells me Bruce, the court onto the wreck business, out hiring guys to take care of me. What a jerk, huh? Jerk? How do you figure? Well, honey, if Bruce, the court on already, you'd know about it, wouldn't you? Well, wouldn't you? I've been thinking, Joe. I've got a scheme for us to get rid of Brewster, get some dough, and take care of your friend, Pete. Tonight, all at once. Dave, Peters, I've landed Stacy. Good work. Did he reveal who the boss is? No, but he's pulling me in on his scheme of revenge on the boss. We're going to hold him up. Then Stacy plans to kill him. Well, I'll be close behind you with one of our mobile squads. We'll break it up in time. Well, it may not be easy, Dave. The boss lives in a penthouse and has some tricky system to control the elevator. Stacy's girlfriend is going to double-cross the boss and let us in. Then you'll have to find some way of letting us in. When's the job set for? Eleven o'clock tonight. What time was that, Mr. Brewster? Eleven. You seem restless, Laura. Bored with your job? Mr. Brewster, believe me. I was never less bored with it. Someone's in the elevator. I'm not expecting anyone. I'll find out who it is. Brewster, stay away from that intercom. Laura, what, what's the meaning of that gun? Push the power button. Laura, Push have... that power button. As you say. Sit down by the desk. Laura, what is the meaning of this? Shut up! Brewster. Stacy. In the flesh. I thought you were dead. Laura told Cut me. Cut the act, Brewster. 
I know about the hood you were trying to get to rub me out. Rub you out? I, I tell you, I thought you were dead. You're lying, Brewster. Stacy, who is this other man? Pete Williams. The guy who put the finger on you for putting the finger on me. Oh, this man is tricking you, I swear. Listen, Brewster. Wait. Maybe Bruce is telling the truth. Maybe Pete is. That's what we're going to find out. Meantime, I'm holding the gun. Pete. Yeah? In the right-hand drawer of the desk, the combination of the safe. Okay. Safe? Yeah, Bruce, we're taking a little trip. You're staying here. Laura, you can't leave me for this cheap thug. Quiet. All right, here's the combination. Take it, Joe. Open the safe. Where is it? Behind that picture over there on the wall. Okay. Now I can turn that music off for good. Laura, what's that? The buzzer. Someone's in the elevator. Look out! Bruce is going for the buzzer. Pete, I gotta shoot. Get out of the way. I'll get him. <laughs> Two ladies pushed it. The elevator's coming up. Laura, how do we get out? Back exit to the roof. Come on, Pete, you too. Now, don't be suckers and run. How do you know who it is? What? He's right, Joe. We'll play innocent. Wherever it is, we invite, invite him. And we put him to sleep. Good girl. Put away your gun, Laura. Yeah. You, Joe, get by the elevator. Right. Now, hold everything. The There's that... nobody in the elevator. The trick. Hold everything, all of you. Counter spies. Don't move or we shoot. What? All right, boys. Cover every door and window. Okay, boy. You all right, Peter? Yes, Mr. Harding. But I wish I'd known you were coming in from the terrace. Looks like a good haul you made. This is Joe Stacy, murderer. About ready to have a stroke. You lousy Joe, chick. shut up. And this, I take it, is the girlfriend. Not yours, cop. Take your hands off me. Gladly, after I get these handcuffs on you. And here, out cold behind the desk, Mr. Harding, the big fish. Andrew Brewster. Used car dealer and hot car racketeer. Peter, he looks so peaceful, I almost hate to wake him up and give him all the bad news he's got coming to him. But on second thought, I think it'll be a real pleasure. Let's get to it, Peter. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen next Tuesday for the exciting Counter Spy case of the Postal Pirate. The little black box that caught the revolver in midair. The one-fingered typist who punctuated sentences with bullets. And the double-crosser who tasted her own medicine and died as a result. Case of the Postal Pirate on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by William M. Sweets, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer, with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi ice cold tonight. Uh-huh.